I hope that you're ready today because today we're going to begin our clay adventure and I am so excited. Now I know what you're thinking, clay? I've worked with clay before. All right, now there's a lot of things that fall into the category that is called clay that you've probably worked with. You've probably worked with something called Play-Doh. You probably have even used something called modeling clay. You can make your own clay with flour, water, and salt. That's called salt dough clay. Really anything that you can squish, mold, and make a creation out of is considered clay. We use something called kiln fire clay, and here it is. I know, not quite as glamorous, colorful, or beautiful as those other clays that I mentioned, but what we can make with it is pretty magical. Before we get started though, let's talk about what is this kind of clay made from? Any guesses? Well, I'll give you a couple of hints. You can find it outside. It comes from nature. It's only made of two ingredients. If you said mud, then ring-a-ding, you win the prize, which is that you get to work with clay with me today. People have been creating with clay since the beginning of time. Once they discovered that they could pull up something from the ground, mold it and shape it, allow it to dry and use it, then people were using it for all sorts of things, not just for art, but for bowls, and pots and cups. You can even still find some of these things. If you're digging in the dirt, you might find some broken shards of old pottery and things made out of clay. Where did people so long ago get clay? When it would rain, the rain would come down and it would start to wash rocks and minerals and different kinds of things start to erode and fall down the mountain. And as it eroded down the mountain, it picked up a little bit of speed and grabbed more rocks and more minerals before landing at the bottom of the mountain. When it did, Native Americans would collect that clay, take it home with them, and then lay all that clay out on a table outside in the sunshine to dry. Why would they want their clay to dry? Well, because some of that clay might have had sticks or twigs or rocks that were just too big and they would have to pluck and pick those out. Once they were finished with that, they were left with a beautiful fine powder for which they added more water back to and then they squished it all together making their clay. The clay that I purchased for you is made in a similar way but in a factory, so on a much bigger scale, but it's still dirt from the earth. And clay, because it's dirt from the earth, comes in a bunch of different colors. Once you're finished with your clay piece, then we want our clay piece to dry. That's right, we don't want it to stay soft and squishy forever because we want to be able to keep it forever. Your clay, when it's drying, we're allowing the water that's in the clay to evaporate or leave the clay. There's tiny little cutesy wootsy molecules of water inside this clay. We want them to go away when we're finished with our piece so that we can move on to the next step of firing our piece in the kiln. Here's a little bowl that I made by hand. When you make something by hand, it's called handmade. When you make something on what's called a potter's wheel, that's called wheel thrown. And here we're going to be building everything by hand so everything we create will be hand built. When your clay piece has completely dried and there's no squishiness to it, this is what's called bone dry. It's as dry as a bone. It's now ready to go in something called a kiln. What is a kiln? A kiln is an oven that's made specifically for clay. A kiln's highest temperature is 2000 degrees. It can reach that high temperature to get your piece complete. When it comes out of the kiln, it goes from this gray look to this bright white look. A clay piece that's fresh out of the kiln is called bisque. Or if you're from England, it's called biscuit ware, which just means the same thing, nice and hard and ready for you to keep or paint. You now get to add the color, baby color. 
Now, when it comes to clay, you could approach adding color the same way you do a piece of paper. You could use paint. You could even use markers, crayons, and oil pastels. Or you could do something that traditional clay artists use, which is called glaze. Glaze is a special kind of paint that is just for clay that has very small, sometimes big, pieces of glass in it. And when you cover it with glass, it definitely doesn't look like much because it has to go in the kiln again. The second time it's in the kiln, those little pieces of glass melt and they come out really shiny, just like this. What's that? You wanna see what my kiln looks like? Well, let's go. I'll show you in the kiln room. All right, guys, this is the kiln room. It's called the kiln room because guess what's in here? Ba bam a great big old kiln. Remember, a kiln is like an oven that's just for clay. And when we put our clay pieces in this kiln, we say that we are firing our clay piece. That means the temperature inside the kiln is as hot as a fire. That fire doesn't hurt them. That's what makes them permanent. That's the perfect temperature to get them to that bisque wear. So a kiln is a special oven just for clay. All right, here we are looking inside of my kiln. You're going to notice a couple of things right away. First, you might notice that I have some clay pieces in here. Can you tell if these pieces have been fired or not? They have. We know this because they are bright white. They have been bisque fired. They are now ready for paint or glaze. If I put glaze on them or the kids do, then that means they have to go back in the kiln for a second firing for those pieces of glass to melt. You'll see that I've got shelves inside of my kiln. You might also see that there are some bricks inside of my kiln. That helps to insulate or keep the heat inside the kiln. And you'll also see some coils. The coils are the heating element. That's what heats up the kiln to get it nice and hot to fire your clay piece. All right, guys, I hope that you're ready and excited to explore working with clay. Just know my favorite thing about clay is this. You can make anything out of clay, but if you make something that you're not happy with, you just gotta squish it back down and try again.